Hello and welcome to this rebirth reading. I'm doing this on Easter Sunday here in the US and I know not everybody celebrates Easter but there is a, a feeling in the air and we're seeing it through the events happening right here right now of this cracking open that is happening and it may even come down to your own personal life where things feel like some type of rebirth is happening, is rising within you, and is literally cracking your world open. Um, I know I keep mentioning it in my readings, but I'm just profoundly kind of stymied about this back pain that I have had. And it comes and goes, and now it's in this sort of just a this dull ache. I can tell that something... It's like when a bone is healing and you have that dull ache and it's really present when there is, you know, when it's rainy, when there's a lot of, with water being about emotion, there's a lot of emotion in the air. And I can feel that sort of dull achiness as this healing and this becoming is happening. And it literally, you know, has kind of broken me open in many ways into some things that I didn't expect and but are exciting to me and turning away from things that I always thought that I would love forever you know um, and in just making some different choices and so it's like our our choices are um, like a grand buffet before us and we're seeing it in the world too where there is such a penetration of the light vibration and by that I mean sort of this very high fast rate of speed kind of vibration that is not only coming from within the earth herself thus the turbulent weather that we're seeing but also causing then the inhabitants of this planet to then kind of as I said crack open where whatever darkest parts and we all have them within us wherever those exist it's like how perfect here on easter that we are experiencing this crack of the egg so to speak and opening up in all of this kind of darkness within us and it takes different forms and some of it is is really nasty stuff some of it hurts people some of it kills people and I'm not making light of that, but I'm just wanting to say, instead of pointing the finger about the things happening in Sri Lanka or um, where, wherever you fall on the political spectrum, that this one, that one, da, 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 understand that this darkness, and, and I don't want you to equate that to bad necessarily, but it certainly isn't stuff within us that helps us out or makes us feel lighter or happier or to have a greater sense of well-being. All of us are going through this cracking open. And just recognize there are some people before they incarnated into this life, they raised their hand and said, yep, I'll take that one. And in some ways, from a spiritual perspective, from a soul perspective, those are very courageous souls who decided to take on some of this very big cracking open and to use their own behavior to do so, um, even to the point of killing other people. Um, it's just something to think about. We're all cracking open. So I wanted to focus this reading for, for the first time, I think, forever in my readings, I'm not doing an interactive choice. These messages feel like it wanted to come through in its entirety for all of us. And so I have three cards from the Animal Medicine deck. And it's funny, I was just using these with a client yesterday. And they're very straightforward. And it says something to me about this energy that we're going through and in I knew I wanted to record this on this day, this very prolific day of rebirth, regardless of whether you celebrate Easter or not, it's in the air, it's in the vibration. And there are these new cracking opens happening within all of us. 
So I want to give messages that are for us on an individual level because that's the only thing that we can watch is our own shop, as I like to say, our own experience here on the planet. And by doing that, you're doing your part. You're you're holding up your end of the bargain if you, you watch after yourself and you watch after this breaking open that is happening within you. And I guarantee everyone is going through this. I, I really feel strongly about that. So to really think through your life about what is cracking open within you, especially at this time of the rebirth, the earth is opening up and delivering her flowers here in the Northern Hemisphere after a very long, cold, snowy, icy winter for many of us here in the Northeast. Um, and all around the world is, is shifting and changing into a new season, into the time of new life. And this one feels particularly potent, I have to say. So the, all three cards are for all of us. And I'll try to make this video somewhat shorter so that you don't have to spend half your day listening to it. But our symbol for this, and I, this is so perfect given the type of messenger that I am, which I tend to be very uh, childlike and very much wanting to bring fun and enthusiasm and positivity and possibility into our lives. I'm not really looking at the woundedness. So our symbol is Leo 19. Now, first of all, Leo is the sun. It is ruled by the sun. It is the, the most fun of all the zodiac signs because it loves to be out there and it loves to shine just like it is, no matter no matter what, it is the part of you that does not mind being on stage, so to speak. Not that we all like being on stage, but it, it, clearly there's a call to shine, is what I feel. And 19 in numerology, uh, 1 plus 9 is 10, so that reduces down to 1 in numerology, which is about new beginnings. This is a new beginning in how you choose to shine in your life, and Leo also is absolutely the one who seeks fun and lightheartedness and not getting so freaking down on yourself and around what everybody else is doing. And if only they would do that or look at what that person's doing or this very judgy part within all of us that we tend to want to put people in buckets. We want to stick name tags on them so we can make sense of their behaviors and that they're bad or they're good. The, you got to get on your own, your, again, focus on your own shop here. It's really important at this time, okay? Kind of let other people trust that they're going to find their way, whatever that may be, and that you do not have to have them by the hand and say, come on along, this is the path, you're off the path, come on. You need to do that for yourself. And Leo 19 reads, a houseboat party I've had this many times in my readings in the past, and I just want to read you from Dane Rudyard's. This is my very well-used Dane Rudyard's and Astrological Mandala. This is my Bible when it comes to the, to the uh, Sabian symbols. And I just want to read you his keynote message about this because I think he says it better than I could about what this means. What is this rebirth for you and me? The cracking open. The enjoyment of temporary freedom from rigidly structured social behavior. And overall, I just get a sense of, because a houseboat is something that you literally live with on, with, live upon, and it's by its nature not solidly fixed. We're breaking out of our rigidity. Okay, that's, the, that's just very clearly what it is to me. So I want to get into the cards. The first card up is what is this rigid nature that we're cracking out of, okay? I haven't looked at the cards yet, and I have the guidebook here because I don't have them all memorized. Dragonfly comes up, and that's number 27, which is 9 in numerology, and that is about greater compassion, being the compassionate humanitarian for other people. And Dragonfly is illusion, and I'm going to just um, read a portion of this, okay? 
If dragonfly has flown into your cards today, you may have forgotten to water your plants. On another level, you may need to give thanks to the foods you eat for sustaining your body. On the psychological level, it may be time to break down the illusions you have held that restrict your actions or ideas. Really pay attention to those words. Illusions, breaking down, restriction. Okay? Dragonfly medicine always beckons you to seek out the parts of your habits which you need to change. Have you put on too much weight or have you started to look like a scarecrow? Have you tended to the changes you have wanted to make in your life? If you feel the need for change, call on Dragonfly to guide you through the mists of illusion to the pathway of transformation. And if this today is not ever the day of transformation, this is the culmination point of that particular energy. <sighs> See how you can apply the art of illusion to your present question or situation. And remember that things are never completely as they seem. And that's the thing I think Dragonfly is calling us to look deeper at the reasons why we employ this sense of rigidity in our lives. This sense of, I must complete my day like this, or I'll share with you, you know, the, this thing I was alluding to in the intro. I got my degree in communications, mass communications from a very prestigious university. And I just, my thought is, you studied that, and you must always do that for the rest of your life, Kat. I mean, it, it's, and for many, many years of my life, it has served me really, really well. And then circumstances around me have mirrored back to me my own response of my change in heart around all of that. That's the beauty of our world and your world. What is your world reflecting to you? What is the illusion that is that is being reflected back to say, geez, I think I feel kind of differently about that belief that I once held. And you will know because your emotions start to change around um, how you feel towards whatever that subject is. So my example for you is me thinking about communication or marketing in particular, I absolutely adore where I work. I do not want to leave there, but it's a it's an uh, an epiphany to me through circumstances, through this rush, this crush of activity within the marketing sphere, and the way that marketing is shaping up in the place where I work, all good positive directions. However, I'm not a fit for it anymore. I came home a couple, I guess, a couple weeks ago now, um, and I just said to my husband, I'm losing my edge. And I was crying, but they were tears of joy. And this is the rigidity that you're, this reading for you is talking about. I'm giving you my example so you can feel into what it is for you. Where are you losing your edge? We're coming into a world where the edge isn't really the thing to have anymore. The, the thing to have is the fluidity, is the ability to shift and change, like living on a houseboat, our Sabian symbol. You have to, all of a sudden, like a couple of jet skis, come down the river where your houseboat is anchored up, and all of a sudden, ooh, we're rocking and rolling, and the teacups are chattering. You got to find your footing. You chose to live on this planet where there is never ending change and expansion happening for every single one of us. And we're, we're living within each other's worlds all the time. So life again is reflecting back to you the components of what you have rigidly maybe always thought and felt about parts of your life. And now it's reflecting back and it's you're taking it in and you're reassessing and saying, hmm, yeah, I don't have the edge for that anymore. 
and it's a it's a big aha moment when those things happen because we have such cemented thoughts that I will always do this I will always be like that I will always um, whatever I always thought I'm always going to do my readings to a camera here. I'm never going to go and do them for a group of people. Guess what has started to happen since this cracking open has begun? I've started, I've just felt led to put myself out there and go and do readings with people in groups. I, I thought I would never do that because that's not my thing. There's something cracking open like, nope. Again, think about our, our Sabian symbol of Leo. Something in you wants to be seen that you are rigidly holding back. So I, I feel the message of Dragonfly is to question that illusion of rigidity. And it could be in the structure of your day. It could be in the, the thoughts you have around what you do for a career, in your personality, in your behavior in how you run your relationships. It, it could be anything, but think about the most rigid parts of your life. That's what wants to crack open. So the energy in the middle, the second card, this is the, the fire energy that literally wants to transform is what I'm getting. Um, it wants to just like fire sort of cleanses and like a forest fire comes in and it just burns everything to the ground so that brand new rebirth can happen. And this is this energy in the middle of the reading. And this is the moose and this is 11. This is becoming, 11 is the first of the master numbers, becoming a master teacher, a master inspirational leader of some kind of you know, really guiding your life to become a, a leader that inspires others in some way. And we can all be that for each other. Because if we think about somebody who, like if, if you go to a little boutique, if you have a favorite shop of some sort, or you have a, a favorite, um, I'll think about my massage therapist, I love her. And she does energy work too. And there's something very special about what she does because it's this very careful touch that she has with how she handles her practice and how she structures it and how she's able to change it depending on the person and the circumstances and taking the time to really talk with you before she gets her hands on you to really know, take that careful step of understanding and I just want you to think about that for yourself. You know, think about that massage therapist, energy healer, a person with a really cool boutique that just, because they're so good at what they do, that's what brings them business. And we can think about ourselves in that. That's what I call your shop. You can think about your own life as a shop, if you will that you take the careful steps of understanding what it is that you're passionate about. And then the key is in connecting that passion to how other people can interact with you, i.e. come through the door of your shop and experience you. What a gift that is. So that's where I feel like the 11 energy of the moose here, which we'll get into, is about you becoming that inspirational source of just really carefully crafting what it is that you're passionate about. This is the energy I feel like we're honing in. So the moose is about self-esteem. And that also connects to our Leo Sabian symbol. Leo has, on, on all outward appearances at least, Leo has the strongest sense of self-esteem. Again, of the zodiac, it is the part of us that does not mind being on stage and being seen. There are parts of Leo that, you know, do that in order to cover up some other things too, but largely it's a very um, self-empowered and, and strong sense of self-worth kind of energy. So I want to read you a little bit about what Moose has to say to you as the 11 energy too. Okay. 
Most medicine people have the ability to know when to use the gentleness of deer and when to activate the stampede of buffalo. They understand the balance between giving orders to get things done and having the willingness to do it themselves. The wisdom of moose medicine is akin to the grandfather warrior who has long since put away his war paint and is now advising the young bucks to cool their blood. Moose medicine is often found in elders who have walked the good red road and have seen many things in their earth walk. Their joy lies in being the teachers of the children and in being the first ones to give encouragement. This is not to say that Moose Medicine people do not use their wisdom to warn as well as to give praise, because they do. Moose Medicine people know what to say and when to say it and to whom. This is about the careful crafting of your life. This is about knowing when to have your foot on the gas pedal and to push it on forward. And knowing, again, think about rigidity here knowing when to pull back. I feel like the cracking within all of us is that so often we don't feel like we can pull back because we got to save the world or we've, we've got to make this to-do list happen or we've got to get ahead. The great American mantra, it seems. Um, I feel it in America the most. Um, But this is wise elder energy. That's why it's the 11. It is about being that wise leader that people look to like elders in our lives who have seen so much of life. If you're listening to this, you are an elder right now. And it doesn't matter your age. You've already seen so much of life. You've already experienced so much. And so you can use that, again, consider it a reflective exercise. You can look back at those times and say, yeah, I didn't like really how that went. I wonder if I need to change it up because I'm starting to feel those same feelings again that I had back then, starting to feel that all over again. And just reflect for a minute before you push forward. So I really do sense this, um, it's, it's a real gift of, of wisdom and having the, the term of self-esteem that Moose represents and what Leo represents and even somebody who chooses to have a houseboat as their home, there is a certain amount of self-esteem embedded in all of that, isn't there? That I don't need a traditional home. I don't need something with a concrete foundation and that I have to constantly be worried about this, that, and the other. I'd much rather be able to move my home. It's like people who live in RVs. There are people who live in RVs the whole year round, but they have the ability to be mobile and to, to be able to get to different parts of their world in order to change the view. And it always keeps you on your toes when you have that ability to be, to move, to see different parts, allowing more flexibility, becoming like the willow and less like the oak tree that then when the strong winds come, it's like, boom, the willow just goes womp, womp. I mean, it has an incredible root structure that keeps it strong but it goes with those winds. It just lets it take it. That's what's being, that's this energy I feel. And there's a real sense of self-esteem in the fact that you can make the choice to call upon greater wisdom that already lives within you. It doesn't matter your age. You do have wisdom on board. And to take that stance of the elder in being able to stand back and as this says, know what to say, when to say it, and to whom. And you can apply that not only to your communication, but in your listening, in your cognition, in your emotions, and how you choose or or choose not to experience those and to whip things up, you know. And also in your action. It's all levels of your energy field and, of course, spiritually. 
know when to listen to your spiritual guidance when you take that in and when you when you just sit and contemplate with it and instead of beating yourself up about what happened last night or what have you you're right here spiritual wisdom and elder wisdom says but you're right here right now you're here and it's okay and where do you want to go from here there's no use in looking back at this point because you're right here everything has led you to now there's a real simplicity that I feel with this energy for us simplifying and it's not pushing it's it's being sensitive to where people are at and when they step across your threshold to come into your shop as I was explaining sometimes a hard sell will work because you know they're on a mission they're coming in they're frantically looking for what it is they want or they tell you what they want and ie this means a friend coming in I really need your opinion about X about whatever or somebody coming in and saying I really want 12 dozen roses and you clearly know that's easy but then there are people who just want to come in and browse and they're not looking for anything specific so just let it happen you know it's it's being sensitive to how to use your energy here that's the real fuel behind this transition that we're going to into so then the cracking open implies a new day dawning right so that's the last card the new day dawning is elk and I often see um, elk and deer the two of them um, I see it as the stag energy really uh, that's such a guidance for me uh, for sure is a real sense of wisdom and strength about it and the three energy that this card represents is about creativity and blending and, and finding a way towards, you know, using your creative mind and being open to other solutions, okay? The elk in the, in the guidebook here says it's about stamina. Again, this is what we're cracking into. We're on the houseboat now of our Sabian symbol, and the jet skis have gone by. And do we have the stamina to just flow with that? Because we might have a whole week ahead of that because those people are on vacation. And okay, you know, we're going to find our stamina. So from the guidebook here, it says, Elk medicine teaches that pacing yourself will increase your stamina. Elk medicine people may not be the first ones to arrive at a goal, but they always arrive without getting burned out. If you have taken on too much recently, it might be a good idea to look at how you plan to finish what you have started without ending up in the hospital. Elk have a curious kind of warrior energy because, except at mating time, they honor the company of their own gender. They can call on the medicine of brotherhood or sisterhood. In discovering the strength which is gained from loving the gender that is your own, you will feel the comradeship that arises from similarity of experience. This is a special medicine that allows the friendship of others of your same sex to overcome potential competition or jealousy. If you have picked elk medicine, you may be telling yourself to seek the company of your own gender for a while. You may need a support group to realign yourself with the stamina of the warrior or warrioress energy that you are part of. This communication with others of your own sex allows you to air your feelings in safety and to get back to get feedback from others who have had the same experiences. You may need a new sense of community, communication in unity. Elk could also be telling you to look at how you are holding up physically to the stresses in your life and to pace yourself so that you maintain an equilibrium of energy over the distance you plan to cover. Vitamins or high energy foods may be one solution along with some personal quiet time for replenishment. Now this too speaks to this is where I think we're going because the times on earth again we're all cracking open 
we're all cracking open. There's an intensity building. Everybody's going into this rebirth. That's the feeling I want you to keep in the forefront, is to not say, oh, oh, looking out and seeing something. You're going through your own crack, crack up phase too. We're all in the same boat. There's no reason to point your finger and say, oh, all of this, this lower vibe energy is cracking out. And so much of that has to do with rigidity and living according to an illusion that I must do it like this. It's very boxed in energy. That, as the reading has shown, is exactly what is shifting. And we're moving into a place of having the wisdom enough to know when to speak and act, when to hold back, using your energy like a fine craftsman, just like you would if you were building a really nice boutique or really great massage practice. You know how you want to craft that. Have the self-esteem enough, the wisdom enough, the elder within that says, yes, I'm going to take my time about this, or I feel the energy at my feet and I'm going to go for it because I know I, I'm not afraid to shine in that way when it is my time. And then this card is saying what we're moving towards is that ability to have the continued stamina. There are going to be times that, again, you need to look at how you're physically stressing yourself because there's so much cracking open energy on the earth from everybody, from the earth itself, and to not feel like you have to solve all that or that you have to label all of that. That's part of the, <laughs> that's part of the elder energy of the moose. But it's remembering that you have the creativity available to find your tribe of people that make you feel satisfied and content. I'm feeling that in my life by going out and connecting with people and maybe thinking about new partnerships in ways for my business or with my corporate work, um, connecting with people in different ways and finding these similar threads that seem to go nicely together and getting out of a competition mindset. There's more than enough room and, um, and thought space for all of us to make our dreams and desires come true and to let ourselves shine as we are. So this is, Elk is just saying, you're doing this exercise right now in order to find a more stable footing. And the stable footing is actually not the stability we have known in the past. We're on a houseboat. That's our symbol. We're on a houseboat. So it's going to shift and change, but you're going through this, whatever it is, in order to find an easier method to stay strong on your feet and to have the stamina to see it through. And to not just give up and say, oh, screw those people. I'm going to go tell them off. They can't keep bringing their jet skis by here because they're screwing me up. They're having fun in their life. They're not doing anything that is uh, against the law. You have chosen to have your houseboat in that, that particular area. You could pick up and move it <laughs> if you're that perturbed. You know, so it's, it's learning to have this flexibility and to ride those waves that are going to happen. It's going to be our experience at least through 2019, and I think 2020 is going to be an intensity that we can look forward to. Again, think about this. It's a cracking open on this day of Easter, the time of rebirth. It's a cracking open. The baby bird has got its mouth wide open and is saying, I'm here and I'm ready to be fed with this new life, with this new knowledge. And it's all in here. You don't have to look to me for it. You don't have to look to some guru for it. It's all in here. That's what the moose is saying. It's wisdom. It's self-esteem enough to know that you've cut this. But the whole point is finding your feet when the ground beneath you is shifting. And to have the stamina to get through that and your creativity and ability to blend and put together different kinds of partnerships and friendships and whatever feeds you in a given moment, that is what's going to get you through it. 
that's going to be this cracking open. Okay? I hope that's helpful to everybody. Apologies to those who are expecting an interactive reading. If you would like a personalized reading with me, either with cards or an astrological review or astro kind of reading, you can visit bluesky-shop, S-H-O-P-P-E dot com, and I'll be happy to schedule uh, your recording for you. And I also have an in-person experience called the Blue Sky Experience, um, if that's of interest to kind of act as a fairy godmother inside us, uh, alongside you to activate that within you to grant your own wishes. Have a wonderful rebirth period. Enjoy the cracking open. It's a new day. Bye-bye for now.